All right, in this video, we're going to look at goal M.1.8 in the ATIT study manual, and it involves proportions. Uh, most of these that you'll see in the book are real world problems. I have three examples to cover here with you to help guide you along the way. Example one, Jack is a car salesman. On average, one out of every three customers that see him end up purchasing a vehicle. At this rate, how many vehicles can Jack expect to sell if he works with 36 customers in a month? So in this month, he sees 36 customers. One out of every three, on average, end up buying a car from him. So one out of every three he talks to, they're going to buy a car. Well, one way, not even looking at a proportion, here's one way you can think about it. One third of... 36. Really, that's what you're looking for. I'm not doing a proportion right now. Really, all I'm going to do here is say, all right, well, one third of 36, that's one third of 36. And really, you're just multiplying two fractions. So we have 36 over 3, and therefore that reduces to uh, 12. So uh, on average, if one out of every three customers that visit Jack purchase a vehicle, and if he sees 36 customers, um, he will have 12 uh, vehicles will be purchased. Now that's one way you can think about it. Now, proportions. That's what this goal is really geared towards. Well, if we take this fraction right here, one out of every three, that is a fraction, one out of three. One buys, one person will buy out of three customers. Well, how many are going to buy, how many customers, how many vehicles will he sell out of 36 people that he sees? Now, this is a proportion. And what you want to do, the, the quickest way to solve a proportion is to cross, multiply, and divide. So cross, multiply this way, we get 36. Cross, multiply this way, we get 3x. And later on in this series of videos, we will talk more about solving equations, but this is how you can solve a proportion. You cross multiply both ways and you set these two cross products that you get, you set them equal to each other. Now we're trying to figure out three times what gives us 36. Well, we know three times 12 is 36, but the way we can solve that is to divide by that three because that's three times something. If you divide by three, the threes will cancel out. 36 divided by three gives us 12. As you can see, we get the exact same answer. Now it's important to mention the multiplication piece here because you will run across this stuff on the T's test and also you will run across some proportions on the T's test where maybe you need to cross multiply and divide. That's the best way in my opinion to solve a proportion quickly. All right. Again, we will review equations some more later on in this series as well, where you have to solve for a particular variable. Let's move on to example two. Now, this one's a little bit tricky. Example two says, Jill's medication indicates to take 500 milligrams of medication every six hours. The medication comes in the form of a one gram tablet. Hmm, be careful with that. 500 milligrams, yet the tablet is a one gram tablet. At this rate, how many full tablets should, should Jill take in a 48-hour period? Okay, first of all, I noticed this. This is where you have to be careful on the T's test. Sometimes your units of measurement may be different. 500 milligrams in one gram, those are two different measurements, obviously, but it's important to know that 1,000 milligrams is the same thing as one gram. So let's think about that. If the pill comes in a form of a one gram tablet, that's the same thing as 1,000 milligrams. But per dosage, she only needs to take a 500 milligram tablet. So really what she's getting out of a one gram tablet, if we take 500 milligrams plus 500 milligrams, that's equal to 1,000 milligrams, and 1,000 milligrams is equal to one gram. So it turns out Jill is going to get two doses per tablet. Now there's multiple ways to do this, but this is the way I would probably think through it without even doing a proportion. I'm going to show you the proportion stuff right here in a second. So she gets two, two does, two doses per tablet. So two doses per tablet. Well, let's think about that. 
48 hour period, she's taking the pill or taking the medication every six hours. So one, she gets two doses per tablet. That means that one tablet, one tablet will provide medication for how long? For 12 hours. For 12 hours. Because remember, she takes 500 milligrams every six hours. So she's going to take one here and one here. That's six hours and six hours. That's one tablet. So one tablet's going to last her 12 hours. Well, the question says, how many full tablets should Jill take in a 48-hour period? Well, we know that one pill is going to last 12 hours. Let's take the 48 hours and divide by 12. That's going to give us four. Because the reason why I'm dividing by 12 is because... 12 hours is going to, uh, one tablet is going to provide 12 hours of medication. So 48 hours divided by 12, we should, or she will need four tablets. Now, that's not a proportion. I, well, it, technically it is, but I didn't set it up like a proportion. What we can do is this. All this stuff set aside, it's still important to note that... You know, we got six hours, we got 48 hours, and then we have a 500 milligram tablet or 500 milligrams of medication, and it, the medication comes in a one gram tablet. One gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. So what we can do is this. We can say she needs 500 milligrams. Here's the proportion way. So let me uh, separate this so we don't get confused. Uh, 500 milligrams per six hours, something important about a proportion. We must have, we must have the correct units of measurement. So if I put an X up here, I'm going to figure out how many milligrams she's going to need in 48 hours. Now I haven't tied this back into the proportion yet, but when you do a proportion, your units of measurement will have to be the same. So if this is milligrams, this is going to be milligrams. This is hours, this is hours. Now let's cross multiply and divide here. So cross multiplying this way, don't waste your time. Just do the, or use your calculator, 48 times 500. We get 24,000. Oops, so 24,000 is equal to 6x because I cross multiply the other way. 6 times x is 6x. Now let's divide by 6, very similar to what we did in the first example. And when we do that, we're going to get x equals 24,000 divided by 6. You can use the calculator for that. And we get 4,000. So what the heck does this mean? 4,000. We just solved for that x. 500 milligrams in six hours is going to be the same thing as getting 4,000 milligrams in 48 hours. What's important to note now, though, is that the question didn't say how many milligrams does Jill get. It says at this rate, how many tablets should Jill take in a 48-hour period? Remember, a tablet is one gram. One gram is 1,000 milligrams. So we have to take this 4,000 milligrams and we have to divide by 1,000 milligrams because 4,000, or excuse me, because one gram is 1,000 milligrams. And remember, one gram represents one tablet. So when we divide this, we still get the exact same answer. Four pills. Now again, proportions here, you want to make sure your units of measurement lined up or line up and they have to be the same. We can't put milligrams here and grams here. We cannot do that. So again, that's two different ways of thinking about the same problem. Just like back in example one, you know, I did the problem here without even solving a proportion, but I do want to stress to you as well, this is how you can solve that proportion. And then when you are actually doing some things with uh, measurements per se, make sure they match up at the top and the bottom. With that said, tying all that together, and I'm going to do a proportion for this one. A cell phone company found on average, or found an average of three defects, so three defects per 500 phones that rolled off the assembly line. So for every 500 phones that rolled off this assembly line, the cell phone company found that on average, three out of those 500 are jacked up. They're defective. 
So if the company made 150,000 phones, 150,000 phones is going to go at the bottom. That's how many that were made. How many will be defective? We don't know, so I'm going to put an X there. And we can solve this by cross multiplying both ways. So 3 times 150,000. It doesn't matter which one you do first, by the way. Heck, I can do this way first. 500 times X is 500, 500X. Cross multiplying the other way, 150,000 times 3. That's going to be 450,000. Again, all I did there was take 3 times 150,000, divide both sides by 500 to get X by itself. Notice I am dividing by the number that's in front of X. We will talk more about equations a little bit later in this series. And when we take 450,000, divide by 500, I'm going to do a few shortcuts here. Maybe I've mentioned this in this series, but I can cancel out those zeros. And now, really, I can just take 45 divided by 5. That will give me 9, but then I have to keep these other two zeros that I did not cancel out. And notice, if I go to the calculator and I take 450,000, if I divide by 500, notice I get 900, that same answer. So a little shortcut there with the zeros. But what does this mean? Out of 150,000 phones, they can expect 900 of those phones to be defective. And that's going along with this same rate, which ultimately leads towards a proportion that 3 out of 500 phones are going to be messed up. That means around 900 out of 150,000 phones will be defective. And there you have it. That's three examples of working with proportions as well as, you know, I went off on a tangent on these first two examples showing you other ways of actually thinking through the problem. This will enhance your critical thinking skills and that is definitely going to be needed on the uh, ATIT's test. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.